Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and in this tutorial we are going to perform a random forest classification. This tutorial assumes that you already know the basics of the semi-automatic classification plugin. So the first step is to create a band set. So we are going to select uh, uh, the directory containing the, the input files, in this case a sample of Copernicus Sentinel-2 data. We are going to select all the bands here. And as you can see, the bands are loaded in the band set. Now in the band quick settings, we select the wavelength of Sentinel-2 bands here in this menu. We select Sentinel-2. And as you can see, the center wavelength is automatically defined for all the bands. Now we are going to define the training input. So uh, the training input is created according to the input band set. So we click this button here. To create a new training input and for instance we set the name training and click save here we have an empty training input and first we can uh, display the rgb color composite uh, 3 to 1 which is natural color here as you can see this is the image the sentinel 2 image that we are going to classify now we should create uh, the ROIs, but uh, in this tutorial we are going to import a geopackage containing the input ROIs. So we select this menu here, Basic Tools, Import Signatures. And here we have several options, but we are going to select Import Vector here. And here we can select uh, a training input shapefile or geopackage. And we are going to select uh, uh, an existing job package here and click this training job package and we can open it. Next, we are going to select the fields uh, corresponding to macro class ID, macro class name, class ID and class name. And now we can click uh, here import vector and all the polygons in the job package will be imported in the training input file. As you can see here, the process of importing can take a few minutes, depending on the number of polygons. And here we have imported all the polygons. As you can see here, uh, we have the classes for water, built up, vegetation and soil. As you can see here, they all have the same color. We should change the color for the water, for instance, with a double click here. For built up, selecting, for instance, red. Vegetation, selecting, for instance, green. And for soil, selecting, for example, yellow. Now that we have uh, defined the colors for our classes, we can uh, try to perform uh, our classification preview. Here we have the tools, uh, but first we should select uh, the classification algorithm from here, the SAP menu, band processing, classification. And here we should uh, select the input band set, in this case one. We should set uh, use training, in this case the macro class ID. And now we select uh, the algorithm, the random forest algorithm with this tab. As you can see here, there are several parameters number of trees, minimum number to split, and max features. Number of trees is the uh, most important parameter uh, because it defines the complexity of the model and usually the higher the better, but increasing the number of trees also uh, increases the uh, time of computation. In general, uh, 500 could be a good compromise. The minimum number of to split uh, is the minimum number of samples that are required to split an internal node, and in general, it can be left uh, the default of two. And the max features is the number of features that are considered in node splitting, and in general, if we leave it empty, all the uh, features uh, will be considered in node splitting. So now we can perform a classification preview, clicking this button here, and then clicking in the image. And here, after a few seconds, we have our first preview. 
we can see the results of the classification in this area. Uh, we can use this button to hide and show the preview here. We can notice that if we don't change the parameters of uh, the random forest algorithm, uh, the other previews uh, will be uh, much faster because the algorithm has already calculated the classifier so we can perform other previews in other areas uh, almost uh, instantaneously as you can see here I'm clicking in other areas and we can uh, see the preview for instance here or here but if we change the number of trees, for example, uh, the classifier will be calculated again and the process of the preview will take a few seconds, as you can see here. As you can see, the process will require a few seconds more. Here we have uh, our preview with the new parameter uh, 100 for the number of trees. Again, if we perform another preview without changing the algorithm parameters, the uh, preview will be uh, almost instantaneous. Uh, we should see uh, an improvement in the classification. We can have a look also at the other parameters of the random forest that are mm, very interesting. In particular, uh, one versus rest is a parameter that performs uh, a one versus rest classification that defines basically uh, one classifier per class. We can have a look at the classification using this parameter. We can use this button to perform a preview in the same area as the previous one. And here you can see the result of this one versus rest classification. Another option is cross validation. This is basically performs a cross validation using a function provided by scikit-learn to avoid overfitting and in particular uh, it divides the training set uh, into uh, k smaller sets. This is particularly useful to increase the accuracy, but also it increases the computation time. So we can create a preview also using this option. And here we can see uh, the preview of this classification using cross-validation option. Of course, the number of trees is uh, very important also with the, uh, the cross-validation option. Another option is balanced class weight. With this option, basically a weight is computed inversely uh, proportional to class frequency in the training data. And another option is find best estimator with steps. This is a very interesting option, although the classification process will be much slower. And basically it performs uh, a iteratively uh, search for the best estimator uh, with a defined number of steps uh, that are defined here with this parameter, in this case 5. Uh, the more the steps, uh, uh, the slower the process will be. And basically the iteration will change the algorithm parameters iteratively, in particular changing the number of trees, the minimum numbers to split and the max futures. And usually this option uh, can provide the best uh, uh, accuracy. And we can uh, perform a classification preview. And as we can see, the classification process is requiring more time to complete and the uh, find best estimator uh, option uh, will require a few more iterations. And at the end of the process, we can see here the preview with these parameters. In general, however, for uh, good results of classification, we should increase the number of trees to at least 500. So we can set here uh, this parameter 500. And the last option is to calculate the classification confidence raster. This is very useful to assess uh, the uh, classification at pixel level. In particular, uh, the output uh, will be, of course, the classification and also a confidence raster that includes a confidence value for each pixel. The higher the value, the higher is the confidence. So now we can perform uh, the classification we could, for instance, uh, save the classifier here with this button and to uh, load this classifier with this button later for uh, classifying also other images here. But now if we want to classify the whole image, we can click this button Run. And if we click, we uh, just select the, the output name of the classification. 
for distance classification. And now, as you can see, the process will take a few minutes to uh, train the classifier and to perform the classification of the whole image. And here we have the result of the classification for the whole image using this training input. Here we have the classification raster, as you can see here. We can see, of course, that there are several classification errors. Uh, and to detect the main errors, we can use also this uh, confidence raster. This is the classification alg uh, file name. Here, the higher the values, the higher will be the confidence. And in this case, uh, black pixels have low value of confidence, as you can see here. In particular, in this area, for example, we can see that and we have uh, classification errors. Uh, we can see pixels classified as water. So, in general, we should create new ROIs over this area or uh, edit the existing ones to improve the results of the classification. But in general, we can see uh, the overall results is quite good. We can see also other areas with uh, quite low confidence uh, here, these black areas over uh, built up areas. But we can also see uh, sparse pixels with low confidence, in particular with mixed pixels over soil. So also in this case, we should try to create uh, new ROIs for improving the results of the classification. And we have performed the classification using random forest algorithm. Of course, in other tutorial, we'll see uh, other algorithms such as subtle vector machine and multi-layer perceptron. Thank you for watching.